Welcome to Expand Your Fempire with Katerina Rando, the podcast for women in business on a mission, sharing ideas to support you to grow, lead, and thrive. Now, here's your host, Katerina Rando. My friend, welcome back to the <laughs> Expand Your Fempire podcast. We have another amazing guest today, Wendy Babcock. She's going to support us to increase our profit, thrive more in our business, and hopefully bliss everywhere in our life. Wendy, I'm so happy that you're with us today. Well, I'm just excited to be here and, and be a guest on this podcast. You have a great thing going here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy, before we dive in, to your super tips and your massive value when we discuss profit, I want to ask you to share with the ladies first a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Like a lot of women, I started out in an MLM. I was working full time and just needed that side hustle to help make ends meet. And so I, that's where it started. And while I was working, something kind of crazy happened. I used to listen to audible books while I worked. And there was a particular book by Pam Grout. It's, I'm not sure if it was E squared or E cubed, but two of my favorite books. She mentioned something called The Complaint-Free World by Will Bowen. And I remember stopping the audible because at that point in my life, I was really trying to push the negativity out of my life and be more positive. I had gotten out of an abusive relationship. And so I was really trying to figure out who I was and build up who I am. And so I looked up this program and that same day, Will Bowen, the creator, was looking for people to take the stage. He wanted to train people to, to become speakers and speak about a complaint-free world. And so for whatever reason, I wasn't a speaker at the time. I worked at a hospital for 20 years and I just thought, wow, I just, I was so drawn to it. So I applied and by some miracle or fate, I was chosen. And I began talking on stages. Wow. Now, Wendy, let's pause there because what I love about that is that you heard about a complaint-free world, mm -hmm. you checked it out, then you took a big leap, I would say. I know you're an outstanding speaker today. At the time, you were not a speaker, but you took a leap. And I love that because sometimes things happen, but we don't let them matter. That We make an excuse or we, we say, oh, it's not the right time or something like that. Beautiful. Love that, Wendy. Okay. Tell us more. So, and it's funny when you, when I the, the take a leap part, like I was nervous, you know, even to send the email, I remember, you know, typing the email out why I wanted to apply and what I could bring and what I thought, you know, I wanted to do with this. And I remember hitting that send button and having almost a panic attack. Like, what did I just apply for? Like, I'm not a speaker. What am I thinking? So I had that whole questioning like why am I doing this moment but obviously it was meant to be and that's really where things started turning around where I became an entrepreneur learning what Will taught about becoming complaint free that was a huge impact besides speaking on it really learning about at the core for myself how to push negativity away and how to attract things that belong in my life and at a particular time in 2017, my husband and I were both at a place in our full-time careers where we both wanted to do something different. I wanted to do the stage thing, you know, full-time. He wanted to run his own business and we both quit our jobs, <laughs> our 20 plus wow. year jobs within about two weeks of each other. Wow. And we just said, let's just do this. Well, there's another big leap that you yeah. all took. I love that. Huge and See, scary. I, oh, very scary. Wendy, yeah. I want to Go back a little bit, because when you talked about sending the email, almost having a panic attack, clearly you were willing to be uncomfortable. You yeah. were willing to feel the fear and do it anyway, right? Right. And this is something also we want to shine the spotlight on because, you know, whatever you want, it's outside your comfort zone. It, it's not going to be easy. There are going to be scary moments. There are going to be scary decisions. There are going to be leaps and uncertainty and I love that your journey is an example of that. Before we get out of the complaint-free world, I just want to remind everybody that a complaint is an unstated request. And when we look at in our life, and now Wendy, you can speak to this too, of course, when we look at what are we complaining about, that means that there's a request we're not making. 
another thing is that could be a decision that you know that you need to make that you're not making. Wendy, thank you so much for that. Okay, so you and your husband, you both quit your job at the same time. (laughs) Wow. I've heard heard a lot of people, you know, pursuing entrepreneurship, but usually if they have a spouse, their spouse has a paycheck. (laughs) Good for you. Okay. Tell us more about your journey. So of course we wanted to have a security net because that we both were taking a big risk and of course people advise against it, but I had a really good size 401k. And so we pulled it and just for a safety net, you know, because obviously with speaking, anyone who's in the speaking world, you have to work your butt off to get speaking gigs, you know, paid speaking gigs. And so that's what I was doing. I was working more than 40 hours a week. People don't see that side of speaking sometimes where you have to, you know, do all these things that you might hate doing in order to get the speaking gigs. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time in front of my computer, (laughs) emailing and setting up my CRM and doing all the hard work. Wow. Well, yeah. And I I like to say, you know, speaking is 10% speaking and 90% schlepping. Yes. Like (laughs) doing all this stuff that is off the platform that helps make it work well on the platform. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Now, so Wendy, I know today that you do more than just speaking. Let's tell everybody a little bit more about what your whole business looks like these days. And then let's talk about profit. Go ahead. Awesome. So, you know, I got to a point where I I love Will's program, but it's also, it's Will's program. Right. I wanted something of my own. I wanted to build something of my own. And so I just started doing, honestly, I was doing a lot of things, a lot. And it wasn't until 2020 when everything basically slowed down or stopped for most of us that I had this kind of epiphany, like I need to figure out really what I want to do. I need to stop doing 20 things, sorry, but half-assed and do one thing and and do it the right way. And so I'm like, I want to build this umbrella of the things I love that covers everything. So, you know, Profit Up with Wendy was born. Beautiful. I love that you said, umbrella, because I like to talk about umbrella too, making Mm -hmm. sure that everything that we pursue falls under that umbrella and yours is profit. Mine is thriving in business. Somebody might have health and wellness umbrella, whatever it is. So beautiful. Okay. So Wendy, Mm -hmm. let's get to the meat of the matter, which is how do we help our listeners have more profit in their business? Because women often start businesses because they want to be of service. Or maybe they just want a little something to do from home while they're raising their kids. And of course, we want them to thrive too. And some of them realize after they get started, hey, I like this. This is pretty good, right? Yeah. The thing is, though, that there are a lot of expenses in business that people may not think about. Absolutely. And and the people say to me, well, I know I need to hire a bookkeeper, and I know I need a virtual assistant, and I know I need X, Y, Z, but I can't afford it. And I would say, well, then you better work on your sales because if you want to grow a business, you got to run it like a business where you're not doing everything. What are your thoughts about that, Wendy? I agree. And what I learned the hard way was, you know, I wanted to follow my passion. That's what we're told, right? Do what you're passionate, get on the stage and speak. But again, it's all that, you know, back room stuff that we have to do. It's those foundational skills. And that's the big thing I wish people would take away is you have to build, because you're not going to be able to afford the VA right off the bat. You're not going to be able to afford someone to build your website. So you have to learn to do it yourself. And that's the hard part, especially if you're not a very tech savvy person. You know, you have to learn social media. You need to learn marketing. You've got sales, your own mindset, networking, time management. There's all these foundational skills that is going to help you make a profit when you start building those up. And that's where we tend to find that stuff harder. We don't know how to do it. And so we put it off. But the sooner we actually tackle that, the sooner we actually bring a profit into our business. Like you said, sales, that's huge. Right. You know, you have to jump in and do it yourself to start. Well, and then the thing is, though, I want want to say to all the listeners that you want to get that stuff off your plate as fast as possible. because, Because, Wendy, I'm sure you would agree. You can't scale your business. You can't grow if you're wearing all the hats. Yes. Let's talk about profit. How do we help the ladies get lots of profit? So to get lots of profit, here's the thing. Once you build those foundational skills, Mm -hmm. you have to be able to let go of the reins. And that's what I found. That's when 
you can hire the experts to help you. Finding the right experts for you, that's when my business took off. When I stopped trying to control everything myself, I about buried us in debt. At one point, trying to get an event done myself, I was trying to do everything, you know, plan it, market it, everything. And I sunk us in the hole about four grand at the end of the, the day with that event that I put on because I didn't give up the reins. So now I've learned, okay, I need to hire somebody to help me with marketing. I need to hire someone to do the VA stuff with the email list. Right. And, and for women who want to bring their profit up, it's great to learn as much as you can about these things. Cause when you hire a VA, you know what you're looking for. When you hire the sales expert, you know, the lingo, you know what you're looking for to hire. Right. And the thing is that you have to know what you're going to want them to do. And yes. like, otherwise you're like, well, I don't know what I need you to help me with. So that's very important. I like to say that in business, the women who own businesses, they have five jobs, speaking, selling, serving their clients, strategy and self-care yes. and that marketing and bookkeeping and graphic design and podcast editing, <laughs> all those things are not the best use of our time. And as you've mentioned, Wendy, if you're trying to do it all, it's usually not getting done masterfully because we are only one person. Exactly. And Wendy, you know, that was okay. That was a $4,000 lesson. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I've had a few of those over the years. No, no problem. Right. Uh, let's talk more. So yes, Definitely. You're singing my song, build a team. What else do we want the ladies to do to increase their profit? My next advice is network and collaborate. I think this is huge and I'm feeling a huge shift in the women I've connected with and networked with. I'm just feeling this different vibe where everybody's willing to want to collaborate and bring resources together and help each other and build everybody up. There's not so much of this competition like I felt, right. you know, 10 years ago. Right. I feel like we're all, we're, we're getting to that place where we all want to see each other succeed and we can do more and do it bigger when we do it together. Absolutely. Yeah. I would agree with you. Collaboration is definitely yeah. on the upswing. I absolutely don't really worry about competition because, right. you know, not everybody is everybody's flavor. Exactly. My mom would say that's why Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors, right? <laughs> we're not everybody's flavor. Right. And that's why it's good that there's other people out there. And I also feel like there's a lifetime supply of people to serve. Yes. You know, if Mary Jane or Sheila goes works with someone else, that's okay. Cause you still got plenty of people to work with you and yeah. Mary Jane and Sheila will probably come back <laughs> in the future. Right. Because yes. especially if you do a good job of staying engaged with them. Okay, yeah. great. Now, Wendy, I met with my bookkeeper yesterday. Okay. We've been working together, I guess, about three years now. And I'm blissing with my bookkeeper because we meet every month. We have communication. We go over the profit and loss statements. We make sure everything's in the right place. She told me yesterday we're up over 30% over last year with Sweet. revenue, plus our expenses are down. Well, we know why, because I haven't really been anywhere. <laughs> that was really good. But you know, I want to say that, and, and I wouldn't, your thoughts on this. I feel like a bookkeeper is one of the first things we want to get in our business because numbers don't lie. And that really uh, my criteria for a great bookkeeper, of course, they have to have integrity, but that they don't have to be charismatic, but they have to be a great communicator. What are your yeah. thoughts? Because I think a lot of people get a bookkeeper, but they don't necessarily have a criteria for a bookkeeper. So what would yours be? Cause I think that's a key hire. What are your thoughts? Yeah. And I think communication is number one for sure, but organization is huge and especially on our own end. So, you know, before we got to a place to get a bookkeeper, it's a matter of tracking things and learning in your own way, how to track things. So when you can hire a bookkeeper, when you get to that place where you're like, I really need a bookkeeper, you're organized so that they can help you better and being open to communicate and just organization's huge on, on their end, on your end. It's a smoother transaction when they're asking you for information. You can send it because you know where it's at. And it's an easy way to go through either email or if you're talking on the phone, it's easy. You give them what they want sooner. Well, yeah, I think that's really important. Organization, absolutely. And you know, when I started my business and even a few years ago, there was just the bank account and maybe the credit card statement. Mm -hmm. Now there's the bank account, the credit card statement, 
Venmo, Cash App, <laughs> Zelle, PayPal, and there's Square. I mean, there's all these different platforms to take money, which is good because we want to make it easy for people to pay us. Right. But that's definitely a little bit more work to manage in business. And we definitely want to keep track of our numbers and know our numbers. Wendy, what are some of the things that you see, like you see this mistake or this myth over and over with some of your clients? So what I'm seeing, and really, I I actually have a a product launch coming up because of this issues. And I was doing the same thing as not keeping track of my networking. So I was meeting and connecting with all kinds of women all over the world because of the, the different networking groups I'm in. And I wasn't recording any of them. I wasn't tracking them. I wasn't following up on who have I given referrals to, who's brought referrals to me. And I wasn't tracking any of that. And I thought, oh man, there's got to be a different way to do this. You know, so I created my own product for myself to use now that I'll be launching, but it's just an easier way to network. Otherwise you're kind of just wasting your time. I mean, it's great to get to know people. We have to look at the ROI, right? Yeah. If you're not adding value to your business or helping others, and that's kind of the main thing because I would connect with so many people and then I'd see a post, Hey, who knows, you know, a branding expert. And I'm like, oh, I just, who did I talk to? Who was that? Mm -hmm. because I wasn't recording it. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing where you can collaborate more. If you have everything logged, you know, who's who and who does what. Wendy, I think that's great for speakers too, because, you know, we have a lot of audiences and like yourself, I'm speaking to a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. I take a picture of the room because I'm pretty good at remembering names and faces. And I would love to see what else you've got going on. And then if I can share another super tip I do is that whenever I'm giving a speech, at the time I schedule the speech, I also schedule a half an hour or an hour or two hours, depending on how big the event is, for follow-up. Because if we don't follow up right after, Mm -hmm. we are going to not get to it. And I will say also, Wendy, secret, secret, sometimes if it's a big thing, I have my assistant come and meet me. And then she helps me. She doesn't do any phone calls for me, but helps me make sure the right emails go out and all that. So she takes over some of that duties. And so I encourage people when you're scheduling a speech and when you're scheduling networking at the time you put it on your calendar, even if it's 10 months from now to schedule that follow-up time, because I think that's something that gets in the way. Yeah, the follow-up's great too. And something that Will taught me when, and it took me a while to actually do this because I felt awkward at first until I started doing it. We know how valuable testimonials are, right? So a lot of times we wait till the, the follow-up to say, hey, what'd you think? Can you, you know, can you, you know, tell me what you thought of the presentation? How did your audience like it? But what Will Bowen taught me is like, right when you get off the stage, go find the person that hired you. You take your phone out, you say, Hey, can I just quick record you? You put your phone up and you smile real big and say, Hey, what'd you think? Because you just got the stage. They're excited. Their energy's up and they just, you know, hopefully loved exactly what you did. And now they're in front of your phone, you're recording and you get a fantastic testimonial from whoever hired you. Wendy, I love that. I want to tell you what I do before I leave, but I love that. That's a great super tip. (laughs) What I do before I leave is when they say, thank you. I ask them for the rebook. And I'm going to tell you about 90% of the time I get an Insta rebook, which is, which is really great. And then uh, what I do, which I like your idea better. I'm going to tell you what I do is when, whatever they're saying, Hey, that was so great. You're so fabulous. Everyone loved it, whatever it is. Then when I get back to my office, I write up whatever they said. And then I send it to them for approval because waiting for people to write you testimonials, Like, especially if they really liked it, they really want to do a good job. They never get to it. Your solution is better, Wendy. I'm going to upgrade to your solution. That's (laughs) fabulous. Wonderful. If they're a little apprehensive about it, you can say, hey, if you want to take my phone and go around the the corner and, you know, record yourself, totally fine. Mm -hmm. But their energy is up and they're stoked about it. They just saw their audience get on their feed and applaud for you. It's a great time for testimonial. That's awesome. I love it. Okay. Now this is something of course, that is integral to business success in in my opinion, speaking, networking and referrals. And I do love cultivating referrals, getting referrals. By the way, I just did two amazing podcasts on this. If you're listening, everybody take a look around for those sessions. But Wendy, 
what I want to say is that I think it's good for people to have a criteria for where they're going to go and who they're going to network with. I'd love your comments on that. Mm -hmm. And also, how do you, Wendy, with your massive expertise, evaluate the ROI on your networking? So what I, what I've started doing now is, and actually I network in a different, a different way than I used to, because networking a lot of times can be surface level. You know, we're just kind of basically getting to know the basics. And I'm like, when I just had a summit, I, if I needed a sales expert, I know 20, I know 30 people that can fill that spot. I want the person that I know, like, and trust. So when I network, I want to get to know their personality, who they are, what's their sense of humor. So now I, with my journal, I start asking these off the cuff, crazy questions to see what their answers are. I want to pull their sense of humor out. Right. And so what I do is I make a connection at a deeper level. And then with referrals, I can now log, I can say, oh, Katarina, you know, recommended me for this person's summit. And if that brings me in a paid speaking gig, or if it's a non-paid speaking gig, but yet I, I just put three people into my program. I can record that amount coming in through my networking. It's a way to record that. So I might have spent, you know, 30 minutes on a networking session with you, but now I just made X, Y, Z of these people that are in it's specifically from networking with you. So that's how I, I track it. Beautiful. And yeah, everybody, you absolutely want to track where your clients are coming from. Yes. And we've gotten better and better at this. And especially with, not only networking, but social media, you want to see, you know, where are you spending your time? Is that getting the results you want? And then of course, with networking, Mm -hmm. not just who sent it to you, but how did they get to you? You know, where did you meet them? Because, because there's an organization that I belong to. And lately I've been feeling like, Oh my God, there's like, you know, I'm wasting my time. But then I met with my assistant who helps me with client management. We looked at Q1, because it was time to pay Q1 commissions, because we pay commissions, of course, for referrals. And so a lot of the people that were our new clients last quarter, because we pay the month after the quarter, they came from this organization. Clearly, I was getting huge ROI. I just hadn't picked up somebody probably in the last few weeks. And so I forgot that it was a great place. So this, I love what you're saying, Wendy, about very important to track Everybody yes. make sure you're tracking not only who's giving you referrals, but what are the sources for those, the organizations, or mm-hmm. how did you connect with that person? Beautiful, yeah. Wendy, beautiful. Okay, now, Wendy, what else? What is the thing that you feel, if you do this, you're going to be more profitable? Or if you don't do this, I'm sorry for you, because your business may not succeed. What are your thoughts? Oh, man. There's quite a few things, actually. I'll take three. Perfect. (laughs) Obviously, number one, those foundational skills. You you have got to dig in and learn those or hire somebody. That's like you said, you need a bookkeeper. You need to get your stuff in order. You need to stay organized. So those foundational things are huge. We put those off. I put it off for literally years. And once I started building them, that's when my business started turning around. Okay. Did Um, everybody hear that? Okay. mm -hmm. When you start getting people on your team, that's when your business grows. Wendy, for me, when I hired my first virtual assistant, we went from 100K to 300K. I was like, wow, how did we do that? Well, because I'm not doing everything. Yeah. And I, I call it the piddly stuff. I, I mean, admin is very important, but it's not the highest, best use of your time yes. as, the, as the business owner. Next, I would say... The networking and collaborating is huge. I think the more you're getting yourself out there, especially there's so many women who are introverts and it, and I'm that same way. It drains me a lot connecting, but I'm moving past that because I'm connecting on a deeper level. I'm making better connections for myself, my business, for their business, because I'm getting to know them more on a deeper level where I want to refer them because I know the, who they are, not just for their business. Because I think we all try to bring our best to our business and, and show up, but it's who you are that I want to refer. Does that make sense to you? Just like when I hire, I want to know the person. I'm not just going to hire anybody just because they're the number one salesperson. I also want to know who that person is. I want our our sense of humor to jive. Yeah. Okay. Wendy, final thoughts, final recommendations, final actions for our folks to take around profit. 
Well, I think we hit on this in the beginning is being willing to take the leap, even when it's scary. When I find something keeps showing up for me, you know, having the idea to, to do a podcast or write a book, if it keeps coming up, just do it. You have to take the leaps. You know, business is scary. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and take some leaps and some chances. It might put you four grand in the hole, but you're going to learn a lot from it. <laughs> That's great. Wendy, well, yes, absolutely. I love that. Leap to more profit, right? Yeah, Beautiful. exactly. Wendy, yeah, let's rest. tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Anything else you want to share with them? Because you clearly have massive value and we want everybody to profit up. <laughs> Thank you. And they can just reach me on my website, which is wendybabcock.com. And I'll be updating my website to include the Profit Up Expert Emporium that we're coming out with. I'm putting 18 to 30 experts in the program to teach foundational skills based on your personality and how you learn best. So we're going to direct you to the correct um, experts to help you learn. So that'll be launched June 1st. Okay, great. And everybody, you can absolutely find out more about Wendy and her social media in the show notes. And if you have not been to katarinarando.com slash podcast, that's where you can find a list of all the podcasts, including this one with the show notes and the transcripts for each of our podcasts. By the way, everybody, I want to remind you to connect with us on Clubhouse and join our club, Thriving Women in Biz. We have events every week. We'd love to meet you there. Also, make sure you've joined our Facebook group, Thriving Women in Business, on Facebook. And guess what? When you join our Facebook group, you will be invited to my next workshop for free. You can always find out when that is at katarinarando.com slash events. Wendy, I want to thank you for being an awesome guest with thought-provoking ideas for us to profit up in our business. Everybody remember, you have a massive value to bring. Go bring it so you can uplift more lives and hey, profit up in your business. Bye everybody. Talk to you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Expand Your Empire with Katarina Rando. 